Blog Talk Radio. Evening, everybody. I want to make sure we are live, ready, and ready to go. So, welcome to Talk Radio Viva. Time to break those change strategies, implement change. Tonight's show is going on rather late. I had a lot of things going on this week, but I managed to get all the things I wanted to get done. I just want to make sure that we are good to go on sound check. All right, so we're good to get on sound check. So the show must go on. Like I told you guys, these are going to be some short this uh, particular month and everything else. And these are just small strategies and things like that, strategic management, for us to be able to handle a level of implementing change and time to break those change strategies to implement change. Part of that is changing the way we handle things, changing the way we handle life, and strategic planning of all things that come along in life that we weren't planning for to happen. And I will give you a prime example of that it is in my environment. It has been less than stellar. It has been miserable in the hardships that I've been having to deal with, with the AC and that, and having to deal with my environment being as toxic as possible. But I still let the show go on, and I told you guys I'm not going to let that stop me from coaching and being a fantastic coach that I am. We're going to continue going. So, again, that's part of the time to break those change strategies, implement change. It's all about mindset. And I wanted to get into that with you guys because I think a lot of people don't understand that mindset plays a factor into everything and our strategies for how we succeed in life and also how we begin to look at our self-esteem. And we're going to talk about those different things in our conversation today. And I want you guys to understand with the seminar how important it is to do all that. But let me go ahead and get our clubhouse together and everything else so that my members on clubhouse can come visit us. And say yes. I told you guys I've been doing a social media detox and changing platforms and things like that because I'm quite the sick of the things that have been going on, Twitter, Facebook, and things like that. It's been just not conducive for my business and business growth, so I want to be around like minded individuals and people who are a little bit more inclined to not be as immature and childish. So, with that being said, I want to make sure that I get everything situated here. So, I will give you guys the club room and I will tell you guys I want to make sure that we're doing everything to make sure it's engaging and with our strategies for success to talk about ourselves and then look at the levels of don't tolerate but be happy in the blessing and adversity and one step at a time and live the dream and get closer to your dream. And part of that is like that song by Goopoly, Closer to My Dream. I love that song for one reason is that there are times when we really have felt that, you know, we kind of felt like we didn't have our dreams come true or they didn't come true the way we thought they should, and we end up finding a way to get closer to our dreams by making a strategy. So with that being said, I'm hoping that we get to a place that we can continue a level of conversation like this and make sure that we are doing everything to open up the doors to having these conversations about strategies to implement change and things like that. So that's part of that. So you're welcome to come into the room. I'm making sure it's just one of these uh, ones where it's open hallway for you to come in and things like that. So let me go ahead and get this going. So it is an open room. And you all are welcome to join. I'm going to go ahead and share it with you guys. So that we can have this good conversation and you're welcome to come in the room. And I'll allow you to raise your hands as you come into the room and things like that and ask questions as we go through our coaching today. And it's also posted to Facebook, so you guys are welcome to do that. It, well, it is posted to Pinterest. And Don Diva Coaching's uh, Twitter profile, as well as IMCC Coaching and Team Wolf. So you are more than welcome to follow those accounts. And those are the business accounts for Don Diva Coaching, IMCC Coaching, and Team World Online for children, adolescents, young adults. For my babies, you need to understand you should be in bed by now. If you are not, 
This is for adult and adult conversations. If you hear anything, you better ask your parents for permission to be in the room before I allow you inside. I do not allow anybody under the age of 18 into my conversations and things like that. But if you are hitting that age of 17, ask your parent phone unit permission, and I want to make sure I give respect and courtesy as I am a mother. So everybody's invited to the room and strategies to implement change. And the strategies for success, as we were talking about, are level of uh, practical time saving and also enhancing in your mindset and how you're going to grow and grow through things. And every person has a creation of himself and an image of our own thinking and believing as individuals and think and believe so they are. And that's by Claude Bristol. And then health is the first wealth. That is by unknown. And the other thing is that when your self worth goes up, your net worth goes up. And that's by Mark Victor Hansen. And, you know, taking care of yourself is not a selfish act. I want people to understand why it's not selfish act to do that. You know, we are all just comfortable dozing off. We're all comfortable trying to ignore the all too familiar pre-flight instructions at life when we're on a plane, boarding a plane. But we never think about what we did to taxi at the end of the day, just like a plane that goes in the airport, taxis down the runway and takes off. Same way to have to taxi back into the airport and it has to go to the levels of the end of the runway and safely park. So when we think about all these things, we have to think about the uh, things of oxygen and the levels and layers of self-care and taking care of ourselves is not a selfish act. So I want you guys to understand that in all circumstances, we have to learn how to breathe and stop, help ourselves before we help others. So I want you guys to get that understanding of that strategy. And part of that is I have met the enemy, and it is the eyes of other people. That's by Ben Franklin, and you are your own authority. Choose not to be affected by the negative opinions, attitudes, or environment of others. That's by unknown. So I want you guys to understand that as a strategic mindset and set us forward, and then to look at our self-esteem. And by the look at that, it's a level of a revolutionary approach of self-understanding and self-awareness. And I want you guys to understand that self-esteem plays a part in codependency. <clears throat> and the one thing we need most in life is something only one person can give us. And I want you guys to understand what this means in this layer of this presentation is only you can give yourself the most precious gift in the world, a real and genuine sense of your own self-value, self-worth, and self-esteem. Now, that's fascinating, isn't it? But it's in the groundbreaking level of mindset and how we think. And, you know, why do we need self-esteem? What happens when you don't have it there? And then we think about the therapeutic approaches that are based on the views of man or a, as a puppet or a machine. So we put our self-esteem in the center of that picture, and it shows how we can make that work for us, and we no longer become the puppet. We become the puppet master. And we begin to look at our working on our values, our inner view, our inner values, and our self-worth and our goals. And part of that self-esteem is that the self-esteem is your greatest need. So we're going to learn about the psychology of the self and then begin to look at the breaking free and begin to look at a revolutionary level of psychological building blocks and theories and distinguished practice levels of therapies that are in California as well as other parts of the world. And then on top of that, a level of biocentric psychology and things like that and a level of teaching this phenomenon across the world with rulers everywhere. And then it conducts a level of a seminar and therapeutic approaches and psychological, marital, and also psychiatric levels of doctrine to go along with that. And part of this is a level of self-esteem and the disowned self, the psychology of the romantic love and the psychology of self-esteem, part of the things that are part of our life that make us grow, grow and then go. And then sometimes, sometimes we end up stunting our growth and we don't have enough self-esteem to love thyself, understand the shadow work that has to be done. And part of that shadow work that has to be done is a level of, you know, psychology as a science, but also as a practicum. And then a level of being an irrational being and a being a violation of consciousness, emotions, and mental health and wellness. Part of that is the nature and the source of self-esteem. And then we have to look at the pseudo self-esteem and pathological levels of anxiety, you know, the things that happen to a panic attack about life and life changes, hardships, and then social metaphysics and self-esteem, as well as romantic love and psychotherapy and psychoanalysis of our psychological self. So part of that is all that in the levels of psychology and self-esteem and in the, of the study of the actions of the intimate and animate 
levels of matter and possessing the power of self-consciousness and power of contemplating our, his or her own life and activity and a profound need for conceptual frame of reference for each one of these points of view and perspective. So I want you guys to understand all of that on that, and that's enough of that psycho babble mumbo jumbo. I'd like to stay on layman's with you guys so that we can get to the nitty gritty nuts and bolts of the presentation without going too far in the biometrics of psychology and psychiatry. So part of that is being mindful, and then on top of that, we have to look at our levels of our spirit guide, our spirit animal, and things like that that come within us. And we think about our spirit animal for one reason, protection, guidance, and wisdom in our power. So when we think about this, we look at our levels of ourselves on the metaphysical, biological, and mental, emotional health, and what our spirit animal and our spirit guide, and usually that's what we call our chakra, and whatever animal that represents all of that, that's where the spirit animal spirit guide comes in. And we'll talk about that a little later, but I want you guys to understand how things are, like, fine when you look at it outside, when you see butterflies or when you see things on the zodiac sign. And a lot of that goes into wisdom, power, understanding, ascension, and those levels of healing and things like that as you go through levels and layers of the psychological, metaphysical, biophysical, things like that, and your environmental. And all that comes into play later in the ascension chakra work and the inner energy work and things like that. So we're not going to get too far deep into that because that goes into meditation and getting yourself into a mindful level of elevation ascension as I was telling you guys so that's deeper and I don't want to get into that just yet so we think about all these different things we have to think about how our emotional resilience goes and I want to give you guys some tools in this because I thought about this the other day when we were talking about emotional resilience and then this goes into children and we look at the healthy mindset of understanding all of that and then transforming the mind part of that is a look for being healthy and professional, personal, and then a level and layer of transforming the mind in a better process mindset and how you begin to look at the transpersonal physiology, psychology, and then the transpersonal psychology of the work of that, recovering to the higher self, and then what's required of you, the evolution of man or woman, and the transpersonal psychology of the child personality and what we develop as an adult. And, you know, when we think about this children, adolescents, young adults, and the things that we need to do as parent, adult, child, and then sub-personalities in the man and the versus the machine, and then conscious levels of ascension and the work that has to be done and the defense mechanisms that come into play, fear and attachment and things like that, and how we get more attached to time and time being money, and then on top of that, understanding levels and layers of stress and the total cost of fear and the fear of change or the time to break those chains and strategies to implement change, and the fear of change is what keeps us from being irrational, keep from being rational versus irrational and staying in the same mindset. And then we have to learn how to combat distortions. And then on top of that, the levels of distorted thinking that people end up having, common misconceptions and rational emotive therapy that has to be put in place. And those are part of psychiatric and levels that I will tell you to go see a medical doctor at that point and a, uh, what we call a social worker on the levels of ARNP, PA, and things like that, those that have those credentials to be able to diagnose treat and begin to look at med management in between while you're going through that transitional phase of time to break those change strategies to implement change, especially if those changes are causing a level of mental health, emotional health, or compromise to well-being or breakdown of well-being due to situations that have destroyed your thinking or rational motive levels of thinking. And then on top of that, secondary emotional disturbances or interferences or irrational levels of beliefs that go into place after you become through a level of layers of trauma or PTSD from levels of life, life changes, or even grief or grief infliction and things like that or unnecessary series of unfortunate events. And then we think about the shame attacking and people who want to shift the blame from their part into those situations and whatnot and going from a level of understanding of not blame shifting or projecting but beginning to accept and have radical acceptance of different things and taking responsibility and ownership and self-esteem versus self-acceptance and towards anything against and away from you. Anything that does not leave an imprint of certain types of positive imprint versus negative imprint and the semantic mind and the sexuality that comes into it and the duality of all of that and our mental self, our emotional self, our sexual self, our financial self, and our mental, emotional, and rational motive stuff that goes all into play when we go into intimate levels of layers of that. So I want you guys to understand all of those different things. And then when we get into the third part of that, communication and analysis of that and being able to analyze are we effective communicators and discharging traumatic incidences in a personally 
professionally and good, rational, emotive way and a cognitive way and then a dialectical way and modes of representation of that and filtering and learning the state of dependent memory versus recovery memory and recalling something and life changing and charting those changes and begin to look at the thin part of this and that's where ascension comes into place, our spirit animal, our spirit warrior, the inner wolf, the inner wolf pack that comes out of us or the inner wolf out of us, and we begin to go into survival mode, beast mode, and begin to look at the level of the sexual woman, sexual man, and begin to go back into our primordial state, and begin to look at the release techniques, the release techniques and procedures, or levels and layers of finding out what works best for us, and this is where I wanted to get into levels and layers of what we call fact-finding, and part of goes into court, family law, and then it goes into levels of legal and levels of law enforcement overlapping in agency and being able to look at those for the parents as long as their parents involved and the situation is not toxic or if there's a marital and there's no children involved and it's not toxic or a level of professional and it's not toxic workplace environment or any other type of things like that that become toxic and the level of responsibility and assigning responsibility, not blame, or levels of reducing production projection and levels and layers of toxic relationships not overlapping and or layers of work professional relationships and then on top of that if you've got both then you're having to alleviate those levels of layers of misconduct or abuse or anything that's arising causing the levels of toxicity and what we call a compromise to MWR which is a military term for morality recreation and welfare and when you think about all of that what does that say to you? Morality is the morale within the organization or organizational structure. And we think about that in the same thing with the household, marriage, or even relationship with parents, or even if you as a parent and what you're transferring to your children based on generational change or generational what we call, uh, I say it, the generational chains that are toxic that are keeping you chained to the same mechanisms that are not healthy and not causing growth. So when you think about reframing all of that, uh, is it their responsibility versus is it my responsibility, and then explorations in the dilemma, and then looking at the level of reversal theory and the splitting of the brain that happens when you have to go to a level of cognitive dissonance when you're dealing with trauma, trauma therapies, and levels of when you go into disorders or things that happen to people. And here's another thing that I hate for people to do. Y'all love to play about mental health, mental health disorders, and y'all like to play in people's faces about all kinds of things. And people can be easily misdiagnosed with disorders that they don't have when they're dealing with more trauma and PTSD versus any other disorders that look the same. So with that being said, that three mindset fact finding is important for the, the psychiatrist, psychologist, the MD, the doctor, or anybody on staff who has to do the interviews and things like that because patients will fall through the cracks in the sense of not doing the forensic work or the important fact finding work that would be required of the court and those that are so-called experts, which I can't stand them when they say they're experts, but you're not an expert in anything unless you've either been through it or you apply the book smart, press emotional intelligence and do the fact-finding work that's required. Part of that is understanding if you get the facts, the who, the what, the when, the where, the why, part of that interview and that part of that fact-finding allows you to go to the integral parts of reframing where do I need to apply certain things, what methods are going to work for each party, and how is this going to work in the long-term interim of the sexual man or woman, the habits to observe, or the habits to change, and the release techniques and procedures that need to be applied to mentally, emotionally reprogram or reformat that person from a level of being changed to the same habitual level of layers of response or reaction. Or if you're in, like, kind of like, for instance, in my situation for the longest time, was reactive abuse syndrome to where I was reacting to a lot of pathological abuse or levels of social media abuses and provoking a gaslighting that reduced the credibility of my abilities, although I had the certifications and I still have them, and they're active as of today, and things like that, and me being a life coach, wellness coach, divorce coach, health coach, and marital counselor, and specialty in those areas because I've lived it. I've also walked the walk, talked the talk, and I know what I'm talking about, as well as going through the paradigm for coaching, which allowed me to be qualified to do that. I just don't diagnose, and I will tell you guys up front, I'm not here to diagnose until I'm finished up with my medical license and everything else, registered with the DEA and other different things like I have to go through as a medical doctor to be able to prescribe and treat medicines and things like that and follow the protocols that are required of doctors. So when we think about that level of layer, that's on another level of paraprofessional. But as a paraprofessional, yeah, like I shared with my uh, followers and things like that on Twitter and Facebook, uh, years of documentary of things that went on, 
it was hard for me to come back from a lot of embarrassment and humiliation and levels of degradation of my abilities, my credentials, and my certifications, and also getting my degree in a level of human resources and business management, and that encompasses levels of organizational management, organizational leadership, strategic management, all the things that I'm certified to be able to do, and that piece of paper allows me to log that and be able to also with emotional intelligence be able to talk to you guys on a level of layman's terms, but also in professional terms for those that are in business and management and those that are going to be going into leading your uh people within morality, welfare, and the organization, being able to keep up the morale, the welfare, and the organization, and the recreation, and keeping up the mental health, emotional health, wellness, and well-being of the staff. And that's part of staff and program development, things that I went to those areas when I was at the college that I graduated from. And my alma mater is CSC, and that's where I graduated from, and you can get there from here. And with that being said, I learned that you can get there from anywhere, including up to hardships and things like that, even manufactured, unethical, immoral, just all the way, all outdoors, wrong hardships that were manufactured for me to go through. And part of that is a level and layer of not staying there and trying to break those chains and strategies to implement change. Part of that took a lot of inner shadow work and a little bit of understanding that where is my responsibility and response and reaction and doing the best that I can to improve my argument when I was outlining everything that was going on and being able to share with you guys and being vulnerable with you guys that some things did hurt me, some things did harm me emotionally, some things did take me down and through it, but I still stood there tall and said to myself, you know what, I may be, well, you know, it's all too long because I am actually short, but, you know, you guys understand what standing tall means. Meaning standing up in adversity and walking tall and saying to myself, I'm not going to let you go and knock me down and I'm not going to get up. So part of that is understanding those levels of telic and parotelic states and then using biofeedback and analysis and being able to understand that from other people and incremental changing of habit patterns and two ways of knowing and symbolic levels of space and understanding that and giving myself enough space to go and take the symbolism of life, the hardships of life, the signs in life, and the little things ambient around to, to, to go gather the lesson and then try to find a blessing in between all of that. And then the reality testing and the reversal theory of being able to improve my level of cognitive, emotive, rational therapies and systems, and then words and meanings, and active in achieving goals over those hardships and jumping those hoops and things like that, and then remaining in that eternal circle, the all being I, and that level of ray of light, and I am abundance mindset from scarcity mindset to abundance mindset, laws of attraction mindset, and begin to look at the three worlds and the semantics and the differential equation of that and the semantics of awareness and being able to create a level of communication and effective communication without remaining in the hurt phase or anger phase or nuclear upset phase, although I'm able to tell you guys rationally, emotively, that, yes, I'm still nuclear upset, but I'm able to improve that level, a layer of animosity, one of the at the top of my lungs, and, you know, just wanting somebody to pay for everything that they've done. And then it goes into explorations of that. So we're in the first segments of all these uh, levels of teachings and things like that, because once we go past one, two, and three in modules and four, then we get into the levels of motivation and then the opening focus and things like that and the state of mind that we need to be at. So we're going to get and delve into the main part of this so that we don't go too far, but being able to go and look at the level of transpersonal psychology and the level of psychiatry and psychology that has to be done. And when we talk about most psychology and psychotherapies, you know, we're looking at just personality traits at the surface. But it's more in recent years, a variety of transpersonal psychology has emerged, which combines perhaps reintegrate the level of psychology and the personality with theology and the soul and beginning to get to the core self, two disciplines and two concepts that have been firmly separated in a level of materialistic, maternalistic level of a Western world understanding versus Eastern and then Christianity and the level of collections of books from different authors and gurus who've understood that you still have to go back to the level of the mystical enlightenment and levels of the eternal energy chakras and values that help you to cleanse your energy, your level of inner energy. And then no matter what industry you're connected to or whether it's personal, professional, or at a level of celebrity, you begin to translate that into medical scientific terms and Anglo-American levels of audience and understanding on the Western side and levels from the Eastern side and the psychosynthesis of that. And those are developed in the 1930s. And also at personality, I have a soul. And each one of us has a soul. And right now we're fighting for the soul of the nation, for each one of us to become whole. And together I am crystals illuminated all together, all as one. And as we implement those changes, we have to 
psychologically, emotionally, spiritually begin to understand these disciplines and in the personality begin to change emotionally. And then on top of that, the superficial and levels of changeable, interchangeable things and context of the medicinal medical state of the Western world and bring them together in a melt of making a level of time to break the change and strategic to implement change and then begin to understand the self and the soul of the self, which is connected to the universe and universally in the United States, where I'm at and stationed at, and beginning to understand the levels and layers of interchange, core change, and our Christos, I am illuminated Greek levels of Christos, illuminated one, shedding light. So you may call in live, 515-602-9765, and you can go to talkradiodema.com, and you are more than welcome to text us at 515-602-9765. Prepare to do more. Text us at 866-727-9323, toll free, or 404-GEORGIA-418-5104, and you may text us and let us know how you feel about the show. Let us know here on our clubhouse and the strategies to implement change while it's open. So I will take people and hands raised in there, and you'll be able to ask me questions, and we'll have that engagement and conversation on our clubhouse, and as well as we're doing our live streaming tonight. So with my night owls and things like that, sometimes I will have that, and I will have you have a level of layer coming in at night, and we have these conversations live and in effect. So with that being said, uh, love offerings are accepted at Dollar Sign I Am Sixty Coaching, Don Diva Coaching, Team World Online, Talk Radio Diva, with Talk Radio Diva, the power to do more. And I'm not telling you you have to do that. These love offerings go to the growth and expanding of the business. You guys are my shareholders in the, the business, in the expansion of the business. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Also come into our clubhouse, Strategies to Implement Change. And we're going to get on into the nitty-gritty. We've been on 27 minutes, 44 seconds. Welcome, welcome. Any viewers, you are welcome to call in live, 515 602 970 or you may call 866-727-9323, and that is international for all people. We're listeners all over. I have listeners in Afghanistan. I have listeners in Iran. I have listeners in the U.K. as well as Australia and uh, Canada as well as the United States. And you guys, thank you so much for listening so far. And thank you for helping me to begin to continue to reap the benefits and the rewards of allowing myself to speak with you guys and give you guys a little bit of common knowledge about coaching, paradigm coaching, and things like that. Again, love offering dollar signs, I'm Susie Coaching, dollar sign, Don Diva Coaching, dollar sign, Team World Online, and dollar sign, Talk Radio Diva. And you can walk on to talkradiodiva.com, and you may do monthly donations as well as you are able to do it one time. So you can walk on there. So enough about that. And we think about affirmations, what does that tell us? Emotional resilience and affirmations of a mindset. Part of that is being able to think to ourselves, how can I bounce back from anything that's going on in my mind, in my world? And how do I begin to look at I am grateful? We begin to look at being I am. And in our I am mindset, affirmations help us. I'll give you one that I'm 100% grateful for my life. I'm 100% grateful for money. Money is neutral, and what matters most is what I do with my money. And what I utilize my money or the donations that I get is to the expansion of the business. As I tell you guys, you guys are all the shareholders in this business and the growth of this coaching and wellness practice, as well as the recovery and the organization of the clinic. That will be open. So when I tell you I am generous, big-hearted, and ready to help anyone, wealth naturally flows to me as a result. I am grateful. I'm grateful to my creator and his abundant graces and generosity. I know where there is abundance in this world. I choose to receive that abundance. And then I begin to look at that. I refuse to let past beliefs keep me from getting wealth or achieving wealth. And then what I deserve. I reject any myths that I have believed that are unsupportive of my goals. I am embracing my natural greatness and attract good things. I make more than enough money, and if anything comes as a gift, I put it towards the business and expansion thereof. Therefore, I welcome any levels and layers of abundance or any type of donations and things like that that go to the expansion of the business. And, again, I wanted to let you guys know we have a giveaway going on right now. You may get a T-shirt or a mug or a dress, depending if you're male or female or if you're cisgender or female or if you're cisgender male and you identify as female, I will be more than willing to give you a large dress if you want that. And I embrace the LGBTQIAQ, QIA community, and happy bride. Happy bride. Sorry. So with that being said, money is a good thing. I make more than enough. I am a wealth magnet. And when you think about the I am abundance mindset, you don't always have to be super uber rich. 
What I mean by wealth is mental wealth, emotional wealth, financial wealth, as it comes, and as the Lord or our Savior or whatever God you serve sees fit. So when you think about all of these different things, you speak that into existence. I focus on abundance. My mind is incredibly powerful. What I focus on is plan. What I give my attention to grows. My mind controls the outcome of what I experience in my life. I have a mindset of abundance. I attract positive things because I constantly think about positive things in my life. I manifest that destiny. And that is what we mean by chakras. And our outer life is extremely positive because my inner life is also extremely positive. No matter what hardships I go through, I look at it from an abundance mindset versus a scarcity mindset. So when we move from that mindset, we begin to look at a level and layer of resiliency and finding ways to move forward in that. And I'm going to give you some tools on that. And I like I wanted to ask you guys, how resilient are you guys? We need to learn how to assess resiliency. Because part of this in implementing uh, strategic planning is learning what can I bounce back from. When we think about all of that, we think about how resilient are you? Resiliency does not eliminate stress or erase one life's difficulties, but if you are resilient, you understand that there are setbacks and challenges as part of life. You accept that life is sometimes hard and painful. Your mental outlook allows you to work through these difficulties and recover. Resiliency gives you the strength to address problems directly, successfully overcome adversity, or manufacture orchestrate adversity and move on with your life. So we think about what to do. We twiddle our thumbs often, and we have to ask ourselves the following level of statement in our resiliency analysis. And zero to five, where zero is never and five to always. I am self-disciplined. I would say right at A5. I tend to take things one day at a time. I would say mm, somewhere around the four. I maintain interest in people, activities, and things. I would say that's kind of like right at a even 3.5 because I've gone through so much. I just have, don't have the capacity to pay attention to everybody. I'm literally working on the inner self. I consider myself, well, unless I'm coaching, then it's all eyes on you, and then I begin to work with you, and it's all about you when you're in my coaching office. So I'll say the 3.5 with that. I consider myself to be determined. I would say 5. I can juggle many things at a time. I would say I'm right at, at even four on a good level of life going pretty well and probably sometimes 3.5 when it's like kind of up and down and a five when my life's kind of like running smooth. There's not no snafus, kerfuffles and things like that. I can juggle many things at that time and I don't give up. Even some, sometimes things are difficult, I persevere. Yeah, I would say as a whole five. I take things in stride, avoid getting overly upset. I try to most of the time. I would give myself an honest or on a very good day, 3.5 on the worst level of life because it's just like a most lowly poster, like I told you guys, and I'm mastering the art of staying calm and the majesty of staying calm, and that takes a lot of practice, and I'm still doing that. I, I am confident I can get through difficulties and challenges. Uh, that's a five, definitely. I'm a very positive-minded person. I don't believe in being what I call toxic in mindset or being negative in mindset because I've never liked being around negative Nancys or negative Nelsons. Those type of people get on my nerves because they find a problem for every solution. And when we think about a person who finds a problem for every solution, then you're going into a level layer of people who are trusted. Those type of people are never winners in life. They're always losers or they want people to be losers with them. Yes, I said loser. I trust myself. Yeah, I would think I would trust myself right at a even 4.9. I give myself a margin for error because sometimes you just can't trust yourself 100%. Ever, ever since I went through a lot of things that changed my life, I would give myself a 4.9. Um, I enjoy learning new things. That is definitely a 5. I consider myself to be creative, and I easily think outside the box. That's definitely a 5. I am proud of what I've accomplished in my life. I would say that would be right at a 4.5. I think I could do better, but everybody says, I don't think I should achieve a lot, but I'm a toxic overachiever, so it's never going to be a whole five. Um, let me see. I always manage in one way or the other. Yeah, that's a whole five. Uh, I consider myself to be competent and good at doing things. That would be a whole 4.5. Uh, sometimes five on a good day. I am confident in my abilities. I would say that is right out there at a 4.9. I've got 1% margin for error because of lots of things, like imposter syndrome, and I went through that period of time once a lot of things knocked me off my mindset of being capable and able and ready. So I had to go work my way up back up to an even five, but it's almost there. So we're like at a 4.99. I have confidence in my ability to adjust to change and find ways to positively cope with that. I would give myself a 3.9 because I'm getting there. 
And due to the levels of things that happened in my life, I would say that it's been a lot, and the toxic environment has been one of the reasons why. And it's been an arduous, torturous, miserable environment, and it's been a provoking, gaslighting, ambient, provoking, force of control environment, and a level of toxic environment in the same county that enables it. And the levels of, you know, constant provoking, gaslighting, and things that are being done, even when I'm on my lives, the constant disturbances and distractions, and the levels of greed, misconduct, things that will be handled in federal court, civil court, county court, criminal court, with restraining orders applied to each and every party involved, including up to the levels of antics and pranks and provoking and gaslighting that's been done habitually, and it's just really become a nuisance at a point of a level of I will have to like, work on that and also work with the ability to cope with the toxic performance and gaslighting and commit partner violence, and then on top of that, workplace violence, which my home during COVID is my workplace, and the disrespect and misconduct, IT antics and provoking and gaslighting that Ivy Rock and Ranger T. Six and several others that Council C20 you did, and several others that are connected to the Nasty Technisha. Monica and several others who were on the high um, and charge and all the things that they did. There's levels of warrants and lawsuits and investigations that need to be done, and the discrediting and the disrespect has all gone too far. So those are things that are have caused that imposter syndrome, and those people need to be held responsible, fired, terminated, and walked out for all their bullying, terrorism, provoking gaslighting. And my workplace business and home place business is my home base for my coaching and things like that. And nobody in their right mind would sit there and target someone in their home based business through COVID unless you're a disrespectful, misconduct, latent, abusive device and bullying. And each one of them need more for their arrest and messing up my levels of economic standing. And then also describing me and playing these nasty, narcissistic games. And I want to warrant for their arrest effective immediately and all the scamming con artistry that they've all done. They need to be held responsible because it's gone too far and it's habitual at this point. So when we think about levels of torturous, arduous levels of relationships, I have removed myself from that. And my self-worth and self-confidence is really elevated, and I never want to be with somebody who looks like that, even if it's a game plan type of that the past needs to be diagnosed and be in a federal penitentiary and locked up for all of his disrespectful misconduct, embarrassment, humiliation, torment, and torture and abuse that he's done to me, as well as the woman that's involved, including that, and she needs a warrant for her arrest, you know, contract order and restraining order. So with that being said, I think we're at it even somewhere around five. So that's on average. So these are just questions and things like that. How do you deal with emotional pain? That is another question that we have to ask ourselves in resiliency. And what I want you guys to know, and that is being resilient does not mean you will not experience difficulties or distress. If you have suffered a level of adversity or trauma or a level of inflicted PTSD from dealing with trauma or inflicted orchestrated series of pathological, emotionally abusive devices, deadly homicidal events, or things like in my experience was being poisoned, being provoked gaslit, being messed with with my water, being messed with my product, and things like that, psychotic, bullying, suggested pranks, provoking emotionally abusive, tormenting environment, an environment in a city and county that enabled a lot of these disrespectful misconduct, ambient abuses, the provoking gasoline, playing with my groceries, doing all the sick psychotic crap that this man has done, damages to my health, damages to my roof, damages to my AC, and damages to my car, you know, damages to my business, my business model, stealing business models, doing all the scamming and con artistry that we've done. And, you know, level of uh, building up a level of resiliency through the emotional distress and things like that, the emotional pain that I suffered, and the level of layers of cognitive therapy that I had to go through, and the level of inevitable part of life that I had to deal with and say to myself, I should no longer deal with this by myself. Let me seek a professional. Let me seek a therapist. Let me see, see if this problem's me. When a therapist is like, there's nothing wrong with you. There's something wrong with them. I'm going to explain everything. And, you know, that's where I would encourage anybody to go do fact finding. If you're a therapist and now I'm with a, a specialist because I told my therapist I want to be present for my clients and as I'm going to go to school to be a psychiatrist psychologist, I want to be able to make sure that I get past the levels of upset, anger, and ire and the levels of feelings of wanting revenge to move to a place of peace and serenity that I'm getting to and a level of ascension and spirituality to move past it so that I can let karma and fate handle those people instead of me doing because if I handle it, I'm going to jail. So with that being said, I want people to understand that and the breakthroughs that you have to do and the level of inner shadow work that you have to do with a psychotherapist and a, a, what we call a psychoanalyst or a psycho level of forensic psychiatrist and psychologist and a specialty when you're dealing with trauma and PTSD. And my main specialty that I will be going into is trauma work, therapy work, and those that have dealt with that. And then the levels and layers of marital problems and toxic 
blame, toxic shame, victim shaming, and all the things that I went through. And it's not easy to share this with you all, but I wanted to make sure that we're vulnerable, we're sitting down, we're having this conversation, and we're talking about all the things that make us uncomfortable and make us feel a certain way. And we begin to look at all of these toxicities that keep us from going to see doctors and begin to look at it, whether you're in a poisonous environment, but still going to seek that medical intervention, medical help, and begin to go talk to the help, as long as the help is not a quack and unearth, uh, like what I call quackery, you know, not doing the forensic work and doing the things that made me fall through the cracks and took so long for me to get to the recovery phase and get into the level of journey that I'm at. And my journey is on the latter part of it where you guys didn't see me in the best elements of my life, not at the worst. You all have seen me in the two and three years, windmilling, online, having to go and deal with the disrespect, the misconduct, the emotional pain, the bullying, the terrorism, the smoking, the gaslighting, all the things that would make anybody angry and upset and at a point of ready to windmill on somebody and just beat the brakes off them because they've done too much and they took it too far. And the disrespect, misconduct, and I'm not naturally inclined to violence, but instead of getting to violence, I had to get to a point of saying, you know what, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my butt to a therapist. I'm going to go sit down. I'm going to have this conversation. I'm going to re re draw out where I'm upset at, where I don't want to let things go, or where I do need to let things go, and begin to work my way through the grief process and begin to see myself past the emotional pain. So anybody who's suffered adversity or trauma in your life, you've probably experienced emotional pain and stress or distress or under duress that same exact thing, and I've been through all of that. So, in fact, resiliency is often built through emotional distress and learning how to go and jump that hurdle of distress and moving into I'm too blessed to be distressed. And a level of emotional pain is inevitable in any part of life, whether the pain is associated with trauma, loss, or disappointment, a level of inflicted grief, or a level of life changes. And you can begin to develop strategies to lessen and manage the struggle. And the struggle is real sometimes. I will tell you as a paraprofessional, I'm working on um, a level layer of presentation while going through all the embarrassment, toxic shame, toxic blame, humiliation, two and three years, all the emotional abuse, tormenting, the gaslighting, the disrespectful misconduct, and I have a workplace at home, and I've deployed a level of, you know, programs that I had designed, did everything that I could to be a professional and automate all of my stuff and do what I need to do to have a home-based business, and yet they could see all the smear campaigns, all of the misconduct and emotional abuse and torment that nobody in their right mind would do to anybody if they actually cared about them. I don't care if you're joking or not, you don't do that. So when we think about all these emotional pains and things like that, you begin to develop those strategies because you know you need to, and the struggle is real. And like I tell people, you don't want to be struggle bus junior, and you don't want to be on a level layer of, uh, you know, examining your emotions and taking a level of reactive approach to it, but you want to begin to look at the reactions that you may be having, if they're unhealthy reactions or they're becoming a level of stress or vital signs damage and things like that, or levels of deterioration of your physical health, emotional health, or your well-being, then begin to go to say, I need to go to a doctor to help me manage this instead of me trying it myself. Let me get on interim med management until I can get to a point of therapeutic. And then from there, you could be weaned off of medicine over a period of time, or sometimes you might find it's okay to have medicine here and there, PRN for you. And that depends on what the doctor says is okay for you. And as you as a patient, you're in the driver's seat and begin to have effective communication with your specialist, your doctor, your psychiatrist, your psychologist, or your ARNT and things like that, or your physician's assistant, and begin to say to yourself, I know what I need, but I need to convey this to the doctor in such a manner that I don't alarm the doctor if there are certain things that are said in the conversations with that doctor, whether male or female, trans, lesbian, gay, homosexual, heterosexual. It doesn't matter what the doctor's sexual orientation is. Long that doctor is a good doctor and has a good level of moral ethics and fact-finding to find out what's wrong with you to begin to fix you because there's nothing really wrong with you. It's just that your mind or your spirit or your emotional self is broken from a level layer of tragic level of misconduct, emotional abuse, or things like that, or anything that's gone on in your life that alters your life, even if it's a loss of identity, loss of your job, loss of who you are, or generational chains that have to be broken, or levels of toxic chains that have to be broken, strategies to implement change. So that's what this month is all about, because I want you guys to understand that and taking those actions and begin to learn to build those resiliency methods and tools and cope with emotional pain. And part of that is the date that it happened, painful thoughts and feelings, sensations, emotions. What did you respond? How did you respond? When did you respond? And the outcome of that response. And as you do this, you begin to look at that. Is there anything that surprised you during that level of exercise that I just told you about? Did any of your actions typically lead to positive outcomes or outcomes that caused you to suffer more? Begin to explain that to yourself and begin to look at that and reflect. So I want you guys to understand those different things. 
And here's some things to recognize words that help you to appreciate your resilience. We're going to go through a list of words that help us to build those things. Ambitious, analytical, appreciative, artistic, authentic, caring, charming, clever, communicative, compassionate, confident, considerate, and courageous, creative, dedicated, determined, disciplined, educated, empathetic, energetic, enthusiastic, fair, flexible, focused, forceful, generous, grateful, helpful, honest, hopeful, humble, humorous, idealistic, industrious, indigenous, ingenious, Integrity, intelligent, kind, knowledgeable, leadership, lively, modest, motivated, humble, observant, patient, preserving, persevering, persistent, persuasive, practical, precise, problem-solving, prudent, respectful, responsible, self-assured, self-controlled, serious, socially intelligent, spiritual, straightforward, strategic, tactful, team-oriented, thoughtful, thrifty, versatile, warm. Those are all words that help us build positive nature, positive words, positive things that come to our speech about ourselves. So a positive self-talk, the things that we talked about yesterday. I want you guys to understand all that and resiliency, and we're going to talk about more tools tomorrow, but challenging those assumptions. We're going to talk about that after we get through this level and layer of this process, and I'm going to make it short and sweet. I've been on here quite a bit. But I want to make sure that we're going through everything and making sure your success rituals that we talked about before go into play with all of that. And, you know, we talk about discovering our talents and what is our fear. And then we have to look at the fundamental ladder of those rituals to success and our morning rituals. We talk about that, our evening rituals, and business rituals if you're an entrepreneur, and the power of our thoughts. And disempowering levels of rituals that disempower our negative thoughts and going from that, from that level. So we'll talk about all of that tomorrow in the sense of going deeper into all that. But I wanted to go into six empowering uh, rituals that help us. And part of that is to help us begin that mindset. And we're going to talk about these in Module 1, Success Rituals, Fundamentals, in the beginning. And, you know, don't be scared of the word ritual. Ritual is a synonym for the word habit. We all know that our thoughts and actions are a period of time will determine how we progress in life. So positive real positive results and negative rituals will reduce undesirable results. So we have many rags to riches stories, and you might be a rags to riches story waiting to happen or a rag story waiting for the right ritual to change your situation to riches. So when we think about this, you'll never know until you examine your life and make the necessary modifications, time to break those change strategies, implement change, and begin to implement rituals that work in those modifications and behavioral modifications, emotional modifications, environmental modifications, and it's time to change your perception about rituals. So learning to discover all those different things, and rituals produce those results, and different results become a level of effective levels of rational emotive therapy and beginning a unique ability for you to discover the uniqueness within yourself and your talents, whether mediocre or great or above average, and then all those of, of, of a level of excellence. Building your rock style and success rituals start with these levels of the ladders that you have to go and climb, which means small steps in what we call breakthrough from last month and beginning to go to a level of breaking those chains that are keeping you chained from making those ritualistic changes and patternistic changes and habitual changes to get to a level of rituals that work and that don't cripple your mind and begin to go and put into action steps to break those changes and strategies to implement that change. And then an incredible mark of the lines of the history of how your feelings are, turning the depths up in your gut, in your chakra, in your mindset, your third eye, and beginning to hit your mark in your target and begin to shed light, your crystals, your illuminated light, your abundance, your scarcity mindset be leading you to an abundant mindset. And then you have to think about what is the fear. If I had it, or if I could, you have to look at your resources that you have and say to what I have. And then you begin to break through that glass. And you begin to say to yourself, to sell your fears and take the necessary steps to set realistic goals and timelines for your concepts. So that's part of your strategy. And with your ideas, you'll feel the power of fear had over your mind, slowly losing that its grip. And then fear will continue to lose its grip on your mind, and you begin to fear not. And when your concept becomes a level of action, an action step, and going ahead, you begin to move from wobbling legs, shaking fingers, and take your leap of faith, and begin to look at the fundamentals and the ladders of success rituals, which we'll go into a little bit more tomorrow. So with that being said, I want you guys to be more familiar with that. 
understanding, and goal setting and time management are equally important in the success rituals and the fundamental ladders of abundance mindset, laws of attraction, illuminate mindset, I am mindset, and illumination of your mind, spirit, body, and soul, and your better version of yourself, and moving through hardship and setting medium goals to a level of harder goals as you get there, and begin to look at the assisting in the developing skill sets and discovering the talents and amazing abilities that you have that you're not aware that you possess. So that's a level of hard work and determination, and it will transform your goals into a level of I, I think I can, to I am, and I will, to a reality. And they begin to look at the work and the hard times that come along with it, and the hardships and anticipate the levels of partial results from the levels of layers of your action steps and beginning to make major results and fuel hard work, and the hard work keeps staying off over time, and you begin to see yourself changing. And that transformation takes time. And it's just like Muhammad Ali. When you think about this, it's impossible to achieve by only having one thought. When you think about how you use the level of hard work and hard work keeps you into determination, both of them have to be used together consistently, simultaneously. And thinking determination and hard work, they are like Siamese twins. You have to look at them as being joined, and it needs, and it's difficult to identify one from the other. But Muhammad Ali had a quote that has an element of humor to it that clearly depicts what you have to do if you want to achieve your goal. And I will tell you, I met a Muhammad Ali when I was a teenager in high school. And the best way to make your dreams come true is to wake up. I have a book signed by him, and he's an amazing person. You have to wake up and be determined to work hard. And Muhammad Ali is one of the greatest, just like Roy Jones is one of the greatest. And one thing I listen to Roy Jones is you've got to do what you're born and bred to do. You have to know what your talents are, and you have to do it with excellence. And we think of the great Mike Tyson, and we think about all those people like that, people who are great boxers in this world. They didn't start out just being a mediocre boxer. It took time, it took perseverance, and it took practice and becoming more determined and becoming over those hardships and things like that and becoming a better of I am becoming great. I am a great one. I am capable and I am becoming. If you look at Michelle Michelle Obama's book, I Am Becoming, you'll understand that mindset. If you look at Barack Obama's book about becoming a greater person, a greater man, or a greater self, then you begin to look at that. If you're a woman, if you're a cisgender woman, you become a greater woman. So I want to make sure it's mutually exclusive to all sectors or whatever you identify as. And making those improvements to your skill and your skill set are another set of levels of by me fun work. And begin to do the inner work, the chakras, the mindset, and the hard work that comes with it, and overcoming obstacles and things like that. And you can gain success in other areas of what you made plans for initially as you begin to go and make those small steps in those time to break those chains, strategies to implement change, and the discovery of new abilities by attempting to work on improved areas of your plan for yourself. Also, you can employ someone who completes the task in your rise level of proposal and having that dream team or level of spark team or anything like that. And if you hire an individual to perform the work or other people who begin to help you as a support system and happening and getting those dreams to come true, and then begin to look at whatever business or a level of personal transactions that you have initiated. So when you think about this, the final success ritual fundamental for me is to never fear failure. It is also inevitable that you will fail at some things as you stage your plan and you begin to move into those levels of strategic planning and have to start your journey and and tell it from the first step. You may have to come back to square one and come back to one. Your failure might be a minor thing, but a few adjustments can be picked up to a progression level to success. And if you fear failure, you have to learn to fear not, trust the process, and begin to accept it, analyze what the possible cause or cause it is, and start strategizing, and then begin to immediately correct that and also prevent it from reoccurring. And your fears will begin to diminish and begin to fear not, trust the process. You begin to trust the light and the crystals within you and that we're all born with in our DNA, RNA, and things like that. And our success crystals are crucial to this. And because we all need them to become successful, we have to try to skip a step. But if we try to do that, we begin to look at, oh, dang, one small step that I hit might be a pivotal step that makes me turn into the great versus mediocre. So we have to look at, we can make sure of a definite fall if we skip those small steps or the levels of time to break those chains and try to implement change. And step by step, you'll discover yourself and find your sole purpose for being an award, a level of gift of life, and a gift and kiss of life to begin to sit there and look at the success formulas, the steps rituals, and begin to employ them in your everyday daily walk of life. You're going to learn to enjoy the roller coaster ride that life has guaranteed to take you on, but begin to cope better with things that begin to cause you to have a level layer of being taken off your square. It's just like that you said, a poisonous environment can be every bit of that detriment, torment, 
or a level of torture or abusive divisiveness. Just like I told you, abusive bad marriage or a bad engagement that needs to end effect immediately, or a level layer of toxic shame, toxic blame, or a level of humiliation, torment, and gaslighting, discrediting of a, a perfectly good business person. You have to begin to look at those different things, and you have to look at the people in your life. Sometimes your spouse is your biggest enemy. Sometimes your fiance is your biggest enemy, or your biggest jealous most level of demonic energy in your life, a level of passive aggressive energy in your life, a level of toxic energy in your life, or it could be your spouse when you're divorcing them and they're trying to make sure that they damage every bit of your presentations or your life, like it's been happening to me. With that being said, you still have to overcome all that and continue to focus. Or it's like toxic people who are in management who have no business in management, like Ivy Rock or Ranger T6 has done a lot of things to me. 2017, 2018, and told me to piss off and all these other different things, or told me F me and all this kind of stuff when I addressed certain things that were wrong, and then they turned around that I was ranting. You know, those types of things that people do to discredit someone who's perfectly capable and capable of leading. So when you think about this, I don't compete with anybody. I'm not out to take anybody's job, but if your job is to effectively discredit me or do things to sit there and humiliate, torment, gaslight, provoke me in my workplace or my workplace environment, then you need to be taken care of or you need to be handled effectively, immediately, shamed and shunned, and then removed. Because once you do that level of disrespect, misconduct, or abusiveness and cause emotional distress or duress or any pain and suffering, then you need to be held accountable. So those are things that we learn in the emotional roller coaster of life that life will guarantee to take you on. So no matter how badly you fail or you get up and you fail again or you get up and you fatigue, you have to look at it as a beacon of light or a beacon of order or a beacon of a level of illuminated crystal or a person who's setting the light if they're short term for it. And that means illuminated one. We're all illuminated some way. But the levels of layers of emotional illumination, physical and chakra ascension illumination and beginning to go and put that energy and ground ourselves in meditation, mindfulness, togetherness, and then begin to become present. And then moving past the levels of harm to a level of growth, a post-traumatic growth or radical acceptance. So no matter how badly you failed in the beginning, you can always become a success and you can always raise again and rise again and rise up to the occasion if you work hard and if you're determined enough. So with that being said, we're going to go into levels of rituals for highly successful individuals tomorrow, alongside the level of layers of what we were talking about earlier, which was the level of layers of success, mindful health, well-being, and then on top of that, a level and layer of removing those different things that are causing you not to do things that are ritualistically successful for you in mindset, brain change, and change, and levels and layers of things that we talked about in the cycle levels of therapy and in cycle analysis and fact finding that therapist have to do to get you to that level to be able to get to the levels of things that are performative and in practice and being able to get you in your mindset of abundance mindset versus scarcity mindset, utilizing those resources and beginning to look and put into the laws of attraction and the energy you put out is the energy that you're going to receive unless it's unrighteous levels of toxic, uh, what we call breaking those chains and generational harm, hurt or upset or things that need to be addressed so you can move forward. So with that being said, I'm going to close out with a level layer of everybody shouldn't do anything as long as you put God first, and whatever God you serve, you have to remember you can't serve two gods, you have only one master. And even at that, whatever God you serve, you remember you have to have a level of layer of you have to pay the Pied Piper eventually. So whatever you do to get where you're going in life, whether good or bad, you have to remember you still have to pay for the things that you do, whether good or bad, to anyone. And you have to remember karma and fate and dogma. And there is no way to get around it. And karma does not forget an address, neither does fate. And they don't forget disrespect. And they don't forget disorderly misconduct, abusiveness, divisiveness, or levels of what we call complicit levels of layers of emotional abuse, trauma, duress, or anything that has been inflicted on anybody who's been a subject of these type of people who are not together or broken themselves. And you cannot always help a broken person until they help themselves or acknowledge their misconduct, disrespect, or out of order abusive devices and misconduct or abuses that have happened to me. So with that being said, I don't worry about it. I leave it at God's front door and I allow God to handle it because, like I said, sometimes the best thing you can do and the best revenge you can have is the success. So with that being said, I hope you guys will like the strategies to implement change series on Clubhouse. And then on top of that, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, I hope you call in live at 515-602-9765. And if you'd like to give a cash app, love offering, dollar sign IMCC coaching, dollar sign Don Diva coaching, dollar sign Team World Online, and that Team World Online total together. And then uh, that Team World Online on the website, and dollar sign Top Radio Diva. But Top Radio gets power to do more. And texting 866 727 and that's international and 404 Georgia 
418-510-418-5104. And you may always do that. You may leave a message or you may let me you know your email up the join mailing list for talkradiodiva.com or you may get it for INCT Coaching on Diva Coaching, online for children, adolescents, and adults. Make sure you book your appointments at INCT Coaching and INCC for specialty appointments, online for children, adolescents, and adults and families and uh, Diva Coaching for regular adolescents, young adults and those who are not I am, that's fine. I don't discriminate as long as you understand that there's a low layer of me here to help and as long as I can make sure that I each one reach one, teach one and the I am abundance mindset and that's the list of a hand for every Everybody else being able to reach each one of you, shed some light, and hit my target and my mark and my alting eyes to make sure that I see all of you, reach out to each one of you, and love on each one of your souls no matter what, and as a beacon of light to make sure that you guys understand that part of time to break those chains, strategies to implement change, is changing yourself first. So you guys have a good night. Thank you for attending this live. I'm about to take you guys on and out of here. Have a good night.